Well, that will depend on political decisions and decisions on investment. <clears throat> and there's certainly some potential for real benefits, but they're also very significant concerns, partly because corporate interests drive the use of the technology in particular directions. So one of the main concerns is about the collection of medical records and uh, DNA from large populations, uh, storing that on databases, sharing it with commercial companies. And that implies a big shift towards uh, predicting disease and medicalizing prevention so that people are marketed drugs and other products. And it also implies big uh, impacts on privacy. In fact, uh, if everyone has their genome sequenced from birth, that really is the end of privacy. Uh, we'd all be uh, able to be tracked using our DNA, stopped at borders, our relatives identified. And that poses potentially real threats to people uh, around the world, but particularly in developing countries where you may have a totalitarian regime or uh, different uh, sectarian violence where certain groups of people are going to be targeted or issues like um, sex outside marriage being illegal and women potentially being targeted for having uh, children from a person other than their husband. So all that kind of information can be misused. Uh, on top of that, uh, there's a lot of evidence of limited use in terms of predicting the big killer common diseases that we're all concerned about? Well, I guess I would say two things about that. First, um, it's not at all clear at this point what the impact of genomics and genetics will be on global health. Uh, I, it won't be determined by the technologies alone, but rather the contexts in which new technologies are either adapted or not adapted. One dimension of that context question is the sort of global health one is talking about. And one, one could mean a few different things by that. Global health, by global health, you might mean um, population health, improving uh, the, the well-being, the lifespan uh, of your entire national population um, in, in the developing world. Uh, that, would, that might imply certain kinds of uses of genomic technology. Uh, a very different kind of global health one might be interested in would be global health security, uh, in which case genomics could actually be a source less of hope and more of worry. Um, the, the dispersion and dissemination of genomic technologies to laboratories around the world might um, leave open the possibility of accidents or, or intentional misuse of, of technologies for, for building or transforming dangerous pathogens. Um, a third possible use, and one that we already see coming along the way, is in biomedical humanitarianism. Um, you might be able to uh, sequence uh, genes linked to uh, drug resistance and, and detect that as it's emerging and try to avoid the spread of resistance to anti-malarial drugs or uh, tuberculosis drugs. Um, so that's a much more promising possible use. And the question there is, well, who's going to pay for those? How are they going to get distributed and disseminated to the places where they're needed? Uh, so all in all, I would say we don't yet know, and there's a lot of possible directions uh, to follow. I think if we look at it very critically, uh, healthcare today in the rich countries and in the poor countries is unsustainable. Uh, the costs are too high and they're growing. Uh, the wastage is high and growing. Uh, and the number of people who are excluded from the healthcare system also is growing. Uh, genomics offers a possibility, and it, I think it's a long road that we, we must take together, uh, to come to a better approach, uh, predictive, uh, personal, preventive. Uh, these are very key issues that, that, have to, that our healthcare systems has to, have to address, and we don't know how to do it today. Well, if we get it right, I, I do believe that genetics and genomics will be transformational. And in particular, I think they will transform personalized medicine and precision medicines. The, the question of how we achieve this is much more difficult to answer. And as a pragmatist, I, I believe that we have to start with where we can make progress. Because the problem 
to achieving this big goal is, is of course enormous and it will need the whole community to come together and, and put the pieces together. What we are excited about is to start with individuals who are highly informed and have given content that is very broad that allows us to explore the boundaries of what can be done and what perhaps should not be done. And therefore, we have people, uh, volunteers, that are very well informed about the dangers and the risks of this type of research. And, and that's why I, I think in this area, projects like the Personal Genome Project can really advance our knowledge and also our, our progress into personalized medicine, as well as human biology and human genetics in general. Well, I think advances in genetics and genomics potentially offer the prospect of um, better diagnostics, better treatment, um, new ways of managing diseases that are actually of extremely high importance, both to populations in high-income countries, but also in low-income countries, where we're seeing, for instance, in Africa, a much greater burden of non-communicable diseases, things like cancers and heart disease and diabetes, joining the conventional um, causes of high morbidity and mortality, things like infectious diseases. Um, and there are certainly some strong potentials of new research and new technologies that emerge from genetics and genomics to offer ways forward for those. But there are some very important barriers at the moment to those potentials being realized. One is the fact that there's very little research in um, particularly developing countries, and therefore very little of it is applied to the particular genetic variants and population conditions of, for instance, African populations. The other problem is that much of this is very, very expensive. So even when you do have technologies um, developing treatments or diagnostics, um, given the private sector involvement and the commercial interest behind much of the research, um, you end up with um, with therapies and diagnostics that are frankly unaffordable for those populations. But the third area is really most problematic, which is that there's a danger, I think a real danger, that the, the hype and the enthusiasm for something very novel around genomics actually ends up being a distraction from the need to continue to invest in tried and tested technologies. Um, though, and also in things that are going to help the wider social determinants of in-health things like basically addressing poverty, addressing health infrastructures, addressing water and sanitation, or addressing more basic um, diagnostic procedures and therapies that we already know about but yet need to be more widely applied. So the danger is that the rush of enthusiasm for genomics is going to distract from the need to continue to focus on these older technologies, which in the end will deliver more benefits to more people and help to reduce global health inequalities. The future of global health could well be a bright future for those people in the world who are fortunate enough uh, to be able to take advantage of these advances in genetics and genomics. There are some people in the world in the future who will continue um, not to have the same level of access. But when I think about the future of global health in terms of genetics and genomics, I'm interested in the large number of likely benefits uh, to human health that are going to flow from these scientific advances. And every now and again, uh, a few pretty scary risks uh, that are also attached uh, to those advances. For example, when through your study of genetics and genomics you are acquiring a greater understanding of life at the molecular level, you are able to tailor your responses as a, as a clinician, as a public health practitioner. Uh, so that you are scientifically well informed to go out and save life, prolong life. That understanding at the molecular level of how to prevent disease, how to cure disease, just to make people healthier, carries enormous benefits in terms of being able to provide better advice to practitioners and to governments. Every now and again, it will throw up an occasional risk, the risk that that detailed knowledge of life will be uh, stolen, misused, um, that a particular experiment might go wrong, that there might be something created in a laboratory for the purpose of saving life that is of such a kind that it could endanger life. Well, in terms of responding to a potential deliberate misuse uh, of disease, 
genetics and genomics, I think, hold tremendous possibilities. They're very exciting. But at the same time, if they were to be misused, they pose substantial threats and risks to global well-being. So I think the challenge ahead for both policymakers and the scientific community is to navigate between these two potentialities so that only the socially beneficial use comes into being. We've been looking at how the rise of genetic uh, technologies could also generate new threats uh, to global health as we move forward. Uh, and I think we've uh, been focusing on two in particular. So first, the ability to deliberately manipulate genetic code and therefore change the properties and behavior of pathogens could increase the risks uh, of a kind of deliberate uh, or bioterrorist attack using genetically modified pathogens. Secondly, we've also been focusing on how as we do more and more research uh, on these kinds of patho pathogens using genetic technologies, we're looking at the extent to which this could also increase the risk of simply an accident happening and, and a new type of pathogen emerging by mistake from a laboratory, which could also have much wider uh, ramifications. Luckily, we've also seen uh, today that uh, many new technologies are actually being developed using uh, genetic technologies. Uh, but even here, we still have a big challenge uh, because most of them are being developed in high-income countries. Uh, and so we need to think about uh, if a terrorist attack or if a laboratory accident would happen in a low-income country, how we could actually move these countermeasures uh, into, the, into those countries. And that's actually something we're discovering is very difficult to do. There are immense regulatory and log logistical challenges uh, that we need to think about as we move forward. Well, one of the things that I think that genetics and genomics offer us is insight into global inequalities, particularly with regard to divisions between the global north and the global south. And I think that um, while these technologies offer quite a bit of promise to the global community, more often than not, because of a uh, lack of regulatory insight, uh, oversight, because of a lack of regulatory oversight and the necessary policies to implement them, um, I think that they more often than not benefit the global north. Um, on the other hand, I think that they also provide some opportunity for populations in the, global, in the global south to collectively mobilize because one of the things that they can do and that we have seen is that uh, communities are coming together around health issues and I think um, particularly with regard to genetics and genomics, people will be able to um, understand better at the biological level what's going on with them and then to be able to join with other folks and actually take some action on that. Well, I think there's huge potential, I'm an optimist about this, and I think there's huge potential for genetics and genomics to impact on global health in many ways. And I think part of the issue in order to kind of assess the impact is to think about what is global health and it means different things to different people. For me, it's about equality and people having the same access to the same healthcare, the same research facilities and so on. And although often it seems like a very wide gap and there are all these issues around access to basic public health measures that could save lives, we're often asked, well, why are you so keen on developing genetics and genomics capacity in low-income countries towards improving global health? And I, I feel very strongly that people in low-income countries where the burden of disease lie need to be educated and understand all the debates and be able to contribute and also to be able to do research that is locally relevant on locally relevant diseases and not rely on the research in genomics and genetics advances that have been developed basically in high income countries for high income populations that aren't transferable to others. So I think there's the, there's the potential for there to be a huge benefit for global health generally when we think about the health of the global population. Uh, but it's going to take a lot of work to get there, a lot of goodwill and a lot of enthusiasm. And of course, there are the people who are more pessimistic about it. But I'm an optimist, so I'm hoping that there will be major benefits within the next couple of decades. <laughs>